Ahoy mates! Welcome on board Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. We are here for a four night sailing visiting the Bahamas, but for today's video, I wanna take you around and give you a full and complete ship tour. We're gonna to go bottom to top, all the way up deck by deck, and show you every single public space that this ship has to offer. So let's go ahead and get it started. We're gonna head down to deck number one, work our way back up. So let's begin our tour of Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. All right, so down on deck number one here, and only a few things to show on this deck. As you see, we have a boarding area at the forward elevators and stairs, a boarding area here at the midship elevators and stairs, and then the medical facility as well. So you can see they have the sign set up when you're in port, pointing you to the gangway, or if you have shore excursions, you can also check out towels or purchase bottles of water while you're in port only, of course, that will not be accessible otherwise. So the only other thing down here is the medical facility. So we'll turn right off here of the midship elevators and stairs. Come straight across and we'll see the signs with the green and white crosses on them that means it is the medical center so we come through and right into the right if you need to be seen hopefully not but should you require it that's where you'll find it now if you're having trouble finding the medical facility you can look for these crosses painted on the floor with the arrows that will point you in the right direction and that will do it for deck number one. Let's head up to two. All right, deck number two, and this is a change. Usually on ships like this, deck number two would feature the conference center at the forward area. But as you see here, only staterooms on the map. If we come down to the directory, staterooms as well. But I will go ahead and point out one of my favorite things to show with Voyager class or Freedom class ships such as this one is that when it has Studio B here, you cannot transverse this area so if you need to reach this area and you're here like i am you cannot just walk down the hall and go through because this is a crew only area so you have to go up to four come across then back down and that's why you'll see it says here access via forward lift lobby only and it also says the same thing on deck three that's why because you have studio b blocking this so if you need to get here to the forward area you need to use the forward stairs and elevators not the midship because you won't be able to walk across so if you're here you need to go up to four across and then back down but as it stands it looks like we've covered deck number two let's go up to three all right deck number three now and this is where the fun begins we have several different things to point out here so we are here of course at the midship elevators and stairs so we're going to turn around here come to the back and this is where we'll find the first level of our main dining room. See, they have the digital menu display board here that will change that nightly for whatever is going to be featured for that night. You see the sign over there, main dining room. So they will check you in here at these desks, have the hours posted. You're usually assigned a deck, deck three, four, or five, and then you head inside and uh, they'll get you seated and taken care of. And here is a look at deck three of the main dining room, as you can see. Pretty standard setup for how Royal Caribbean usually likes to do it with the three decks spread out. You have those large porthole windows on either side. And in the middle, you do have the grand staircase, the nice artwork, the chandelier up top, and it is open air to decks four and five. So back here in the aft of the ship, decks three, four, and five is where we'll find the main dining room. So we'll see the entrance to those decks on those later areas of the tour. When we go to deck four and we go to deck five. But this is from deck three, so that's the main dining room. Now, as we exit the main dining room, we pass through the midship elevators here. You'll see we'll start finding some artwork because this is where the art gallery is located here on deck three midship. So there's the sign, here's the desks where they'll set up different auctions or have you guess the artwork weight or the cost of it things like that different kinds of contests and if you're interested in purchasing any of the art you can speak to them as well you see it goes all the way around here around the staircase the staircase goes up to decks four and five we'll get to those in just a little bit and the art continues into the next area but if we look above we see it says studio b so we're entering the studio b area even though we're not actually going into studio b just yet because we have something ahead of that which as you can see on the sign there is the focus photo gallery so this is where you can come swipe your c-pass card and you can view any photos that the staff has taken for you throughout your journey you can purchase those lots of different uh, souvenirs and keepsakes that they have they do like the etched crystal like these kind of things here you can buy camera equipment they even have snorkel equipment in here which is interesting 
picture frames, SD cards, Instaprint cameras, different things like that can all be purchased here at the Focus Photo Gallery. And they have a lot of stations set up self-serve for you to come and assist yourself with your photos. They also have a GoPro station here if you wanna purchase a GoPro. My one recommendation is to not wait until the last night of the cruise to come look at your photos because it will be extremely crowded in here. Despite having all these stations, it will get quite full. Now our last item for this area is the actual theater itself, Studio B Center Ice. This is where they'll have the ice skating shows. It's closed right now, but we went in the other day during the ice skating show, so you can see that here. So usually they would have laser tag. It was currently closed for our sailing, still closed due to COVID protocols. Hopefully we'll be back open soon, but they'll have free ice skating sessions included with your cruise fare, as well as those aforementioned ice skating shows, which are always fantastic. So you definitely want to come to Studio B check out all the action. All right, let's use our map here to get a little more reoriented. So saw the main dining room, came out, checked out the art gallery, the photo gallery, and then Studio B. Now, as I mentioned before, we will not be able to transverse here. You can see Studio B goes all the way across. So to get to the last thing here on deck three forward, which is the theater, we're going to have to go up here, across on four, and then back down. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, deck three forward now, and actually I'm a little bit up, I'm on the staircase, but it'll be the best way to show you the entrance to the Royal Theater. Again, here forward on deck three. I did wanna point out, you can also access the theater from deck four. Now, if you're on deck four, you're gonna go in on the sides, but deck three is right here in the middle. And the theater is currently closed, but we did go in the other night to show you what it's like. So you'll go in here for the main theater production shows. They'll have game shows set up sometimes. They'll have live entertainment that switches out the variety acts or the headliner shows. So lots of fun stuff to be found inside of the Royal Theater. Checking back out our map, the theater is the only thing on deck three forward. So we've covered the entire deck. Let's go to number four. All right, deck four now, and we are still forward. As you can see, so the only thing forward here listed on the map is again the Royal Theater. And as I mentioned before, when you're entering on deck four here, you will actually come on the side, starboard or port, see the sign for Royal Theater, and then you'll turn and head right inside, of course, when the theater is open. Now, even though it's not on the map, there is something I wanna show here on deck four. So if you head outside here, either side, starboard or port, and you come out on the so a lot of people call it the promenade deck. Oh, hello, Oasis, our favorite cruise ship ever. Didn't know you were here. <laughs> Anyways, you'll have this promenade deck. You know, you can uh, walk around here. They do have chairs you can set out. There's shuffleboard along the way. But what I actually wanted to point out here are these stairs. And again, you'll find them on either side. If you head up the stairs here, it will take you to deck five. So we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but you'll find the helipad. So let's go check that out really quick and then we'll come back to four. So I have ascended the stairs there. I wanted to point out, sometimes you can also access this area through these doors, which go into the star lounge, but that's dependent on if those are open or not. Whereas you can almost always come out on the promenade deck, head up the stairs, and then walk all the way forward. So let's go check it out. So through the tunnel, down the path, we turn, and we come to the forwardmost part of the ship that you can access. Come up these little stairs here, and we find ourselves on the helipad. Of course, here, in case of an emergency, in case there needs to be a helicopter brought to the ship for some reason, but you're free to access this. As long as it's open, they will have the gates closed back there due to high winds or other things like that, but as long as it's open, you're free to come out here, walk around, grab some pictures. It's a great spot for sail away or a great spot just to come check out your surroundings, like the Carnival Conquest or the Scarlet Lady Virgin Voyages. We've sailed on that one or the aforementioned Oasis of the Seas over there. So you get a great view, even if you're sailing, if you're in port, the helipad's a great spot to come in, get a look back at your ship, all kinds of fun stuff. All right, let's head back to deck four. All right, back inside on deck four now. So again, we came outside, went all the way up on five to see the helipad, showed the theater here. So now we're gonna turn and head back towards midship slash aft. First thing we're gonna find is the schooner bar. This is a Royal Caribbean staple. It's the piano bar on board. And it's always themed very nautically. So you'll have the dark woods, the ropes, the mast, the ship's wheel. And of course, as the name would suggest, the bar back here, pretty much centrally located. They do have some TVs up there. Sometimes play live sports, usually just ship information. They do have the large porthole windows over on the side. And right now they're doing trivia. That's a common thing throughout the day. Piano music at night. Now, if we come back around here and turn the corner, because we don't want to miss this, we will find 
Izumi, Hibachi, and Sushi. So both of those, these are specialty restaurants, so they come at an additional cost, but you can have either Hibachi or Sushi inside of this Izumi. So a quick look inside Izumi here. See, they got the Sushi bar over there on the side, and then they have the Hibachi tables here centrally located. So not a huge location, but you can definitely come get your Japanese cuisine on. Highly recommend it. All right, so leaving the schooner bar area and entering Casino Royale. Obviously, this is the casino on board, and it's pretty standard fare, what you would expect to see on any Royal Caribbean casino. Lots and lots of slot machines, video poker, video blackjack, that sort of thing. They do have all kinds of table games, blackjack, roulette, craps, three-card poker, Texas Hold'em, all of that stuff. You do have your bar centrally located, and then a stairwell in the middle there that goes up to the Royal Promenade. We'll get to that in just a bit. They do have TVs mounted throughout that do play live sports. So you can check those out while you're getting your game on. And it just continues on throughout. More of the same, right? Lots of slot machines, coin pushers. They do have additional table games here centrally located towards this entrance. And then you can see all of the games over there on that side as well. They do have ATMs in here. They do have ticket machines that count and dispense money. Uh, they do have the cashier's stand, of course, if you need to have that, anything done over there. The casino host desk all kinds of stuff like that. They do lotto draws in here, and they even have a key master uh, game over there if you would like to try that instead. So there you go, that is Casino Royale. Now exiting Casino Royale, we will enter one of our favorite areas, Playmakers, Sports Bar, and Arcade. So the name pretty much tells you what it is. We're entering into the Arcade section first. So they do have Magic Arrow, the S-Cube, the Key Master, and two claw games. They do have some shuffleboard, tabletop shuffleboard here. The giant Pac-Man game over there, love the colors. And then I love that they have some retro games in here. Mario Bros, Miss Pac-Man, Defender, and Donkey Kong, all available for an additional cost. You would have to swipe your C-Pass card there and it will charge you to play those. Uh, but a bit of a tip for arcade games on Royal Caribbean, as we will see in our actual arcade later as well, is that if you know you're gonna play in an arcade on board, we recommend purchasing those arcade credits ahead of time on the cruise planner or what is now called My Royal Cruise as you will get a discount. So you can get like 25 bucks of arcades credits for $20. So it's like a 20% discount. So definitely recommend that. And around the corner here, they do have some additional arcade games. They do have three basketball shooter games and then two skee-ball games and they have the nice light up blue and green ones that we really like and now we'll see the actual restaurant portion of playmakers didn't want to point out the games don't stop though they do have two billiards tables as well as two foosball tables there but you can see tables and chairs throughout high tops they have booths around the walls big tvs in the back and then just tvs everywhere through here everywhere you turn you will find a television to look at you're going to have your bar here centrally located with bar seating and then one thing i wanted to point out the owner's box this is kind of uh, hidden on this one, but you see the stanchion set up here. So the owner box has no cost, but you do have to reserve it. You see reservations for any information, please contact any of our service. Thank you. So usually not a cost to reserve the owner's box, but it is kind of a first come first serve situation. You can see it's a much nicer area. It's kind of walled off here. You're going to get personalized service, of course, and uh, you have these huge TVs to take in whatever's on that night or that day whenever you're coming. It's a really nice feature to have the owner's box, especially if you're gonna have a party or a get together or something like that. And I should mention here that the food at Playmakers is an additional cost. This is not included with your cruise fare, but we do highly recommend it. We, we thoroughly enjoy this location. Now we'll exit Playmakers, we'll turn, come kind of into the, uh, I guess you could call it Centrum area. So over on the starboard side, we're gonna have just some seating and the cool car seat there. Nice photo opportunity. Turn back, look at this awesome entrance to Playmakers. And then we'll turn over here on the port side and we will find Boleros, the Latin Lounge. This place gets hopping at night and they do have the bar located here in the middle. There's our sign. Boleros. And you do have the porthole windows on either side here of this area, letting in that natural light during the day, which is a really nice feature. Then you can look down here. This is the stairwell that went back down. You see the art gallery and then into Studio B there, or you can take it up to deck five to the promenade. Again, we will get to that in just a bit. For now, we have one more thing to see here. Let's head to the back. So last thing for deck four is the deck four entrance of the main dining room, which you can see here. I'm not going to go in. We, we saw it from 
from deck three and it's pretty much the same. We're just a deck higher now. So just know that if you're dining on deck four, this is where you would enter. Checking in on our map here, it looks like we have covered everything on deck four. Deck five, you're up. Deck five begins and we are here at the midship elevators and stairs. So just one thing to see behind us here, then we're gonna head forward through the Royal Promenade. So exciting stuff here on deck five. Now the one thing to see aft that I mentioned is the entrance to the main dining room here on deck five. Similarly to on deck four or deck three. Again, it's the same exact dining room, just another deck up. So no need to go in there. But if you have deck five dining, this is where you'll enter. And they do have those digital menu boards on every deck of the main dining room. I didn't show it on four, but here it is on five. We saw it on three. So regardless of your deck, you can find that right outside. Okay, now let's turn and head forward. See the rest of this interesting deck. I would be remiss to not stop here and point out the artwork. I love the red, yellow, and green lights suspended up above. And then when you come to the promenade, look at these columns. Light up different colors, have the statues up top. At night, the ceiling lights up different colors. It's a really cool look for the entrance of this Royal Promenade. Now, before we enter the actual promenade itself, we do have a couple of things here on either side. So when we come over here to the left, we'll see all of the seating, the porthole windows, though they're looking out at the lifeboats. So not much of a view there. Do have the bar here over to this side because this is our bar as the sign suggests here. So lots of tables, chairs, don't really do too much entertainment in this area. It's just more of a lounge space. We do have that cool picture frame seat over there. It's a great photo opportunity. Now across from our bar over on the starboard side, we will find guest services. This is where you'll come if you have any questions or you have any service related issues, you can speak to them there. And right next to that is the Voom desk. If you're trying to have purchase onboard Wi-Fi or if you need assistance with it, you can speak to them there. Now we will officially enter the actual Royal Promenade. So the Royal Promenade is going to feature different things, stores, restaurants, bars on either side here. I think we're just gonna shoot down the middle and I'll point things out on either side as we go. So let's start here with our next cruise desk. This is where you'll come and book your next cruise while you're on board. They will give you a savings or onboard credit towards that next cruise. You can have this sent to your travel agent as well. So there's no problem, just let them know, hey, we want Hoffman Happy Travels to uh, be on that next one. And they'll set that up right then and there for you. Super easy, no additional cost for you there. They also put out these different flyers that have the upcoming cruises you can take a look at and you'll meet one-on-one -on -one with someone who will assist you in picking out that next adventure and the stateroom included with it. Now across from the next cruise desk, we will find the market. This is just a store that has kind of active wear, I guess you could say. They do have some different kind of shirts and shorts, bags, sandals, hats, just kind of a, you know, a little bit more, not upscale, but it's not just standard Royal Caribbean merchandise. There's Quicksilver, and Roxy, and all kinds of stuff in there. So the next thing on the port side of the Royal Promenade is Cafe Promenade. And this is the one location on board that is open 24 seven. So you see there's plenty of lounges in there, chairs and tables you can sit down at. You can come here into the back and get standard or decaf coffee. They also have teas, usually some hot chocolate things like that you can get set up with there. They usually have some chilled water or maybe juice or lemonade throughout the day. And then they'll have the main counter here where you can get uh, snacks, uh, breakfast items during breakfast, sandwiches later in the day, cookies and desserts in the evening. This is all included with your cruise fare. And then you can also order specialty coffees or some bar drinks from this area as well. Now those are not included. You would need a, a beverage package or just purchase those a la carte to take advantage of that. Across from Cafe Promenade next to the market, we will find the shore excursions area. So this is where you can come in and purchase shore excursions. If you did not purchase them ahead of time, have the hours of operation posted there if you need to speak to someone, but otherwise you can just tap your CPASS card and actually purchase shore excursions from these different tablets. So they'll have them listed in there, loaded in, the different things you can purchase for each stop of your sailing. And next door to shore excursions, we will find Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Now this location is very special to us for this sailing. Since we are staying in that room 
right up there, right above it, that is the Ben & Jerry Suite. It comes with free ice cream and suite lounge access, even though it's just a promenade view interior room. For more information on that, check out our Freedom of the Seas playlist, check out our room tour and our daily vlogs where we get into full detail. But for here, this is just Ben & Jerry's ice cream location, so you can come in and purchase different flavors of Ben & Jerry's ice cream. These are at an additional cost. You can also get them in fresh baked waffle cones, you can add toppings, you can have them made into shakes. Lots of good stuff. The flavors do change pretty much every day. So on the first few days of our sailing, there are about eight to 10 different flavors. Now you see there's only five listed. So you just have to come in and, and see what they're offering for that day. Next up on our tour of the Royal Promenade, we have Regalia, or Regalia, fine jewelry and fine watches. I mean, the name pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Oh no, they have a bunch of balloons in there. I don't like balloons. Anyway, <laughs> necklaces, bracelets, watches, all kinds of stuff for purchase inside of that store. Now, speaking of things for additional purchase, we can come across here to Port Merchants. This is where you'll come to buy alcohol, cigars, sometimes they'll have snacks located inside there as well, all for an additional cost. And it would not be a Royal Promenade without a cool car. Next door to Port Merchants and across from the car, we will find the Logo Souvenir Shop. You'll see the crown and anchor up there because everything inside of this shop is going to be Royal Caribbean merchandise. So it's going to feature the name of the ship you're on or just Royal Caribbean in general. So they'll have different kinds of clothes. They'll have model ships, toys, bags, hats. I mean, you name it, they pretty much have it inside of the Logo Souvenir Shop. So all your Royal Caribbean stuff in there. This is also where they'll usually have like two for 20 or two for 25 on the t-shirts different things like that across from logo souvenir you will find vintages this is the wine bar on board i love the way that they design this with all the dark woods and the stone prominently featured you do have the couches throughout tables and chairs as well your wine bar centrally located here and they have do some more have do have some more seating over there on the side a little bit here out kind of on the uh, edge of the promenade as well should you kind of enjoy people watching and want to sit out to the side, you may do so. Just outside of Vintages, we will see this cool colored staircase. And if you were paying attention, you should remember this. This was the one that was from Casino Royale. So we're looking right down into the casino. There's the casino bar right there. You can actually see some of the tops of some of the slot machines. So you can take that down, as the sign suggests, into Casino Royale. Across from the stairwell into Casino Royale, we will find the Bull and Bear. This is the English style pub on board. You see they have the tables and chairs actually out here on the promenade, if you prefer. Oh, I like the statues of the bears there. Very nice. Or you can head inside. Whoa, check that out. <laughs> There's the bull. <laughs> so we found the bull and the bear. Uh, they will have a small stage, as you can see here. Usually nightly entertainment, acoustic guitar, things like that. Sometimes karaoke. And oh, wow, this is really cool. Really like the decor in here. Check out the owl statue, all the books. And then, of course, your bar going along the back. Lots of ceiling fans in here too. Keep things nice and cool. Nice and dark as you would expect from a pub. Across from the pub and next to the Casino Royale staircase, we will find Solera. So if you wanna go in, purchase different makeup or fragrances or whatever it may be inside of there. I'm not overly familiar, but uh, you can go inside. When it's open, of course, you'll notice all these stores are closed. That's because we're in port. So stores and merchandise, casino, usually are not open in port. You can see there. The hours for today they don't start until 6 45 because we're in port so you can go anytime pretty much during a sea day as long as they're within their normal hours of operation in port it's going to be closed and speaking of being in port or shopping we have the port and shopping desk so this is going to be your shopping expert on board that can tell you about all of the different shopping options in the various ports that you'll be visiting they post their hours of operation right here at the desk so you can come talk to them get advice on shopping. Sometimes they'll have different sales or offers that they can tell you about as well. So our last item on the left side of walking forward here of the Royal Promenade are the fashion boutiques. So we do have another regalia, luxury jewelry section here, and then what they call the collection. So different bags and other kinds of accessories. They do have some shirts and clothes inside of there as well. So once again, these stores are closed because we're in port, but once we leave, they will open back up. You can go in and get your merchandise. If it's a day at sea, 
going to be pretty much open all day. Now, sometimes they will also set up smaller desks and table areas out here in the center of the promenade where they'll have featured items on sale. So you'll want to check that out for sure. Saving the best for last in the Royal Promenade, it is Sorrento's. This is your included pizza stop. That's right, included with your cruise fare. Now you'll see the Coke Freestyle machines. These are not included. You would need a soda package or higher. So any beverage package that includes the souvenir Coke Freestyle cup with the Royal Caribbean logo on it. You can use the Coke Freestyle machines. They have them here. They have them in the Windjammer Buffet, various locations. So as we come across here, it's not just pizza at Sorrento's. They will also have some pastas, some different uh, cheese, tomato kind of thing, olive bar sort of situation. Then they'll have pizzas, again, included with your cruise fare here that you can get at Sorrento. So they usually have pepperoni, cheese, and vegetarian. And then there's usually a daily feature that changes. Could be the carnivore, which is like a meat lover's. Could be the Caribbean dream, which is kind of almost like a barbecue. They do have a barbecue chicken offering as well. So you just have to check in for that day and see what kind of slice they're serving up at Sorrento's. But you can see there's lots of seating in there. It goes all the way around the back. They have all these cool pictures up, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, stuff like that. So Sorrento is a good spot to get some included pizza during your cruise. Also next to Sorrento's, there's a random ATM. So now we've exited the Royal Promenade and we come all the way forward here on deck five and we will find the entrance to the Star Lounge. So we go straight ahead here and you'll see the Star Lounge ahead of us. This is a multi-use space. They'll have nightly entertainment, could be karaoke, could be a trivia, could be a dance party. You can see it's a pretty large space, lots of seating in here. They do have the porthole windows across on the side and then they do have a bar over here on the port side. And just before you enter the Star Lounge, you'll see here on the uh, starboard side of the ship, they have the library and card room. Let's take a quick look at that here. So it's just kind of a quiet space. They do have the library. Oh, they're actually stocking the library again. They hadn't been doing that because of COVID, but now the books are back. They also have some daily paper games like Sudoku, maybe a crossword. They have checkers and dominoes, things like that, that you're free to come in and use. You see they have lots of... Uh, seating throughout and they also have some computers and a printer here so normally if you need to access the internet you would need an internet package to sign on my past experiences it has been free to print things so you have to check there could be a cost for that i've been able to print things for free but you never know that might be a cost that you'll incur so yeah here you go library and card room deck five forward starboard side and checking in on our map we showed the main dining room showed the star lounge the library and card room and then everything in the promenade so we are done with deck number five let's go to six deck number six now we look at our map we don't see anything we check our directory it's just state rooms so we're done here let's go up to number seven deck number seven once again just state rooms Go to eight. Deck number eight now, and it is tic-tac-toe three in a row. We're just back to all staterooms and kind of giving it away every time I show the directory. You can see what's gonna happen on those next few decks, but you can bet I'm gonna still show them. Let's go up to deck nine. Deck number nine, you already know it, just staterooms. Let's go to 10, finish it up. Deck number 10 is where the all stateroom fun ends. So we'll be back on track. Let's go ahead and get up to deck number 11. Get this tour back on the road. All right, lots of stuff to see here on deck number 11 because this is our pool deck, or some would call it the Lido deck though. That's technically reserved for another cruise line. And we're gonna call it the pool deck here on deck 11. As you can see, we are forward here. So one thing to show on the inside, the fitness center, and we're gonna turn and head outside and see the rest of the deck. So just off the forward elevators and stairs, see the sign, Vitality at Sea Fitness Center, and they will have the hours of operation posted right outside here. Before you head in, let's go in and take a look. They also have the wellness consultation desk there should you need to meet with someone and uh, discuss your wellness status. Looks like they have some uh, bikes, stationary bikes set up here for a spin class. They also have these different kind of treatment areas for tired legs and good arch support on your feet, scale in case you need to weigh yourself. And then you'll get into the regular area of the fitness center here. You have the water fountain there towels should you need those and then you're gonna have all of your standard equipment in here right resistance machines elliptical stair climber uh, treadmills it's gonna be the most prominently featured thing and the cool thing is this is one of those typical designs of a fitness center on a Royal Caribbean ship where it faces out forward so directly forward here all the way up with these big picture windows for the ceiling so you can look out while you're exercising if you're not watching something on your machines digital display over on the port side here 
they will have some more resistant weight machines, some free weights, dumbbells, things like that. And they do have uh, TVs up in here as well, broadcasting sports. So it's nice and it's nice and air conditioned per the usual with a fitness center. So pretty nice offering here. Do have another scale on this side should you need it. And then this area here is for, I believe like group instruction. They do have uh, yoga mats and medicine balls and resistance belts, things like that. So they have this area here. I do believe they use for uh, group instruction. So yeah, there you go. That's your fitness center. So exiting the fitness center on deck 11 forward, we're going to turn and we can go port or starboard side here, head outside to the solarium. Now, a lot of people say solarium is the adults only area, technically 16 and up, not 18, but 16 and up. So what you're going to find here is just a lot of lounge chairs. It's kind of usually a quieter spot. Sometimes it can get a little rowdy. They do have the pool over there centrally located and the solarium bar back behind that. You also have the cantilevered whirlpools here on either side with the big glass windows and the dome ceiling up above so you can enjoy that. Just walk over here. The other side should be kind of a, a mirror image here of what we've just seen. You've got the bar rail seating here looking out at the pool. They do have the glass bridge that goes across the pool there, which is really cool. And there's built-in bar seating in the pool. You can see the station there on that bar, looking back towards the front of the ship. So get the bar, actual solarium bar back here behind us. Bar rail seating there as well. And then again, this side will just kind of be a mirror image of the other side. Cantilevered whirlpool up on the side there, looking out, sticks out over the side of the ship. Do have the uh, lounge chairs, fresh water shower, all of that just continuing throughout. So lots and lots of space to relax here in the solarium. And this one is not climate controlled. This is open air. So they do have the windows that slide open there and whatever the temperature is outside, pretty much how it's going to feel in here in the solarium, maybe just a little bit more humid, but again, 16 and up for the solarium. So now we exit the solarium and we enter the main pool deck area. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop. And I'm going to actually head up top. I'm going to go up a deck higher so we can get the bird's eye view. That is probably the best way to see a pool deck and get the layout of it. So let's go ahead and head up and we'll see that bird's eye view. And while we're up here, might as well show you the bird's eye view of the solarium pool. So again, have the pool there, bar rail seating there, the bridge that goes across and then all the lounge space off to either side. Okay, let's look at the main pool. All right, so up above here, so we can look back at deck 11, our main pool deck. And so the first thing you're gonna see is the lime and coconut bar. This ship, Freedom of the Seas, did receive royal amplification where it did get some upgrades, including the Caribbean style pool deck with the lime and coconut bar. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, but you can see the first level of the lime and coconut bar, and then it actually goes up to the second level there. And then there's even a third level, just got some nice lights and some comfortable seating. We'll see that in a little bit. I did wanna point out though at the lime and coconut bar, this one has some swings attached right at the bar, which is super cool. I really like that. But let's look at our Caribbean style pool deck. You can see we do have hot tubs here. So we have one giant one there and then there's two over here. These two are covered. So should it start raining or if it's just really sunny, you will have protection from that. Then you see our main pools. They have this one netted off right now, but they do have another one on the other side. Both of them have the shallow entry with the little shelf with the chairs in it. So it's technically in the water and then you can get into the deeper section. In the middle is just a solid walk across. So you can walk right through there in the middle, go across um, to either side as you would prefer. And then you do have your giant movie screen up top there. They will play movies at night. Last night it was Venom, Let There Be Carnage. They've shown different kind of stuff. They'll show random things like this or coral reef footage or different stuff uh, during the day. And you can see we do have the lounge chairs all throughout the pool deck. They also have some comfortable couches, a different kind of style seating on the perimeter. So that'll give you the, uh, the overhead view here of the pool deck. I'm gonna walk just a little bit forward and show you the other side past the bridge that goes across there. So I'm up on that bridge that I mentioned just behind the big uh, jumbotron there, the big movie screen. They do have some chairs up here, but I wanted to give you the bird's eye view of Splash Away Bay, the kids splash play area. This one is awesome. You see all the different colors. There's also a couple of smaller hot tubs here on the side that also have cover. Good for the parents to watch the kids play. They have all kinds of sprayers in here. They do have a couple of different slides, as you can see, the big bucket that fills up and then dumps all kinds of splashing fun to be had. And even down below here, soft play area, they do have the uh, pool, little pool there with the waterfall coming in. It lights up all awesome different colors at night. So you wanna be sure to check that out. All right, that's the bird's eye view here of deck 11. Let's head back down 
and check out some of the uh, smaller, more intricate features. All right, back down here on deck 11. Wanted to point out that the port side here on deck 11, as you come out of the solarium, is the smoking section. So if you're looking for that, that's where you wanted to head. Just wanted to show the lime and coconut in a little bit more detail. Those awesome swings there built into the bar. And then over here on the starboard side, as soon as you exit the solarium, you can see the towel checkout stand. This is the towel station. So you can check out towels free of charges. Make sure you return them. Otherwise you will incur a charge. You can just check those out right there with your C-Pass card. And next to the towel station is the lifeguard station should you need to discuss any safety issues with them. They also have complimentary use swim vest here should you need those for any of your smaller swimmers they are available. I believe they are free of charge. Now headed back towards midship here next to Splash Away Bay. On the starboard side, we'll find two things. Tide Trail Adventure Gear. So this is where you can get things like snorkeling gear. Um, I don't know if they do scuba diving lessons or not on this ship. I don't see any information posted about that, but I do know this is where you can purchase. I see they have snorkels and goggles and fins that you can purchase in there at Tide Trail Adventure Gear. Now, right next door to that, you will find Sprinkles. This is the soft serve location. You see, they got the, all the mixes there ready to go in. So this is the uh, included soft serve section on board. So we saw Ben and Jerry's earlier for an additional cost. If you just want some ice cream or frozen yogurt for free with your cruise, this is where you'll come, the Sprinkles. Now, next to Splash Away B here on the port side of the ship. I, I think I might have said port side when we were over there. I meant starboard. Now we're on the port side, and uh, either way, here on the pool deck, you'll see the Fiesta starts here because this is El Loco Fresh. This is where you're going to come for your kind of like Tex-Mex, Mexican style food. So they do have tacos, take you a little, little tour as they get set up. So they got flour tortillas, the chicken for tacos, beef for tacos, Mexican rice, they have pork carnitas today. Don't always have that. Black beans there. They do have nacho chips, cheese sauce, carne con chile chicken burritos, beef burritos, chicken quesadillas, and cheese quesadillas, as well as the drink station here. So this is included with your cruise fare. Any of the food that you just saw is included with the price you paid to get on the ship. So come here, they usually open for lunch. You see the hours of operation were posted back here, 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. That's a pretty typical time frame for them. So you can come there anytime they're open and get your food. They also have a bar located right next door here. Now the bar is not included unless you have a drink package, but should you want to get your drink on, you can do that there as well. Last thing to point out here with El Loco Fresh is the salsa station. So for this one, they have guacamole, pico de gallo, sour cream, salsa roja, lime, lettuce, not listed, but I see jalapenos there, and I also see salsa verde. Um, then they have a selection of hot sauces here at the end that you can grab and put on your nachos, your tacos, burritos, whatever you'd like. And important to point out, you see no one's here tending the station as we'll see here and when we get into the windjammer buffet in just a minute it is now self-serve once again royal caribbean cruise ships are self-serve they have gone to the staff serving you the crew serving you during covid protocols but now it is self-serve even including here at el loco fresh all right we're back inside on deck 11 now let's use our map to get reoriented so the first thing we saw was the fitness center then we came out and saw the solarium area with the solarium bar in the pool saw the lower floor of the lime and coconut the main pool area splash away bay kids splash area saw the dive shop and the ice cream station here and then el loco fresh on this side so now we're here at the midship elevators and stairs we're gonna head aft and check out a few different dining spots so you can see the sign right when you come in windjammer marketplace that is the buffet on board included with your cruise fare chops grill is a steakhouse for an additional cost and giovanni's italian kitchen of course is an italian restaurant also for an additional cost but you access all of those through this main entry area here here are the hours of operation posted for the windjammer buffet yes dinner is back that was also shut down during covid protocols for quite some time there as we come in now you will find your hand washing stations on either side and then you proceed forward into the windjammer area here so they'll welcome you into the buffet first thing right when you come in is a bar so if you need to get some drinks you can stop in at the bar there and order those now here's how the windjammer is set up we're going to get back to the specialty restaurants in just a second but you can see you can go right 
towards port side and go left towards the starboard side and it's pretty much going to be just a mirror image on either side so what you're going to find is all of your tables and chairs of various sizes two top four top six top eight top ten top whatever it is all on the perimeter and then on the inside is where you're going to find your food stations of course different food items available throughout the day whether it's breakfast lunch or dinner and then also those change daily some things are the same every day like burgers and hot dogs but then things change from day to day maybe they'll have indian food or chinese food mexican food different kinds of cuisines you'll also locate beverage stations throughout the area again regular coffee decaf included with your cruise fare they'll have iced tea lemonade fruit punch water included with your cruise fare as well and as i mentioned earlier you will find some coke freestyle machines in here so if you have a beverage package including that souvenir royal caribbean cup you can fill that up here at the coke freestyle machines and you're going to see it just continues all the way around here the different food station that they have set up and then as you come all the way to the back you, you of course have the floor to ceiling windows all the way throughout on the perimeter including here on the very back of the ship so you get an excellent view out the back there while you're dining and then this is kind of the main food area because they have several stations located throughout the area so there you go that's the wind jammer again food changes based on the service based on the day but the other side is going to be pretty much exactly the same that you just saw on this side. So back at the entry point of the Windjammer here, and we have a specialty restaurant on either side of us. Let's turn to the left, which is the port side here, and check out Chops Grill. Again, this is the steakhouse on board, available for an additional cost. They will have menus posted here outside. Give you an idea of what they have going on. Let's see if we can take a quick look inside. So here's a look at the inside of Chops Grill very upscale very refined they do have the blinds closed right now usually those would be open at dinner service so you could look out the floor to ceiling windows and enjoy the view see the tables and chairs throughout mostly two tops in here but they do have some larger table like a four top here and then the restaurant does continue on through the back there into that big rotunda area with additional seating they have the open kitchen style right here as you come in as well now directly across from chops over here on the starboard side we will find giovanni's italian kitchen so giovanni's table was the royal caribbean staple for italian restaurants they introduced giovanni's italian kitchen here on freedom of the seas they also have it on wonder of the seas and odyssey of the seas we have eaten at it in all three of those ships it has been excellent every single time we love giovanni's table but Giovanni's Italian Kitchen is a step above and it always has this cool bike, which is really nice. They'll have the uh, digital menu display board here. So you can check out the menu if you're curious about dining here. You can also scan the QR code and view it uh, via the Royal Caribbean app or just pull it, pull it up in the Royal Caribbean app is an option as well. Love the entryway they've built out here with all of the, uh, the brick and the wood and the decor. And then you head inside here, got the big G on the floor, Giovanni's check-in desk here and then you can proceed in to the restaurant much like chops grill you have the floor to ceiling windows all along the side here you can see they have the tables set up and then they have the uh, open kitchen style there and then again very similar to chops they have an additional room section in the back here with additional tables only reason i'm going to come back here and point it out on this one is because that is where the pizza oven is the pizzas here at giovanni's italian kitchen are delicious highly recommend of course this restaurant is for an additional cost checking out our map for deck 11 we saw the fitness center we saw the pool area splash away bay el loco fresh dive shop the soft serve and then the three restaurants on the back so that means we have completed deck number 11 let's go up to 12. All right, up on deck number 12 now, and this deck is kind of a mishmash because this area is all open to deck 11 down below it. That's where we were viewing the bird's eye view of the pool deck earlier. So what we're gonna do now is we're here at the midship elevators. I'm gonna head towards the back see several different things in this area one thing i want to point out before we go i don't know how much of this area we'll be able to show because it is the kids and teens area royal caribbean has updated their filming policy even the kids and teens themselves cannot film inside these areas if any other children are present so if it happens to be empty the staff usually will let us go in and take a look but if that's not the case we'll just have to film on the outside you'll get a pretty pretty good idea of what it's like let's go check it out so just off the midship elevators and stairs here on deck 12 you see the sign here adventure ocean ao babies off to the left ao juniors and the arcade straight ahead nice colorful sign but that's not the only color here look at the rainbow hall 
very reminiscent of Epcot. Imaginate. No, that's something different. <laughs> but as we head into the main area here, they have all these cool signs and marquees up. They have some uh, digital game boards here so they can tap in the CPass card and play those digital games, which is really cool. Then they have the play place which is like a big playground. Oh, and no one's in there. So I can kind of show it really quick from the outside here. See, it's just kind of like a soft padded playground area. It's really nice. They have the different, like the ship and it's kind of like coral themed on the back, different interactive games that they can play when they go inside of that area. And the next thing we find down the hallway is the arcade here. So the arcade is open for anyone to use, not just for children. You can play using your CPASS card or if you need an arcade card, you can purchase that here. Maybe if you want to do that for the kids so they're not having to use a CPASS card. Maybe theirs doesn't have charging privileges. You can purchase a card there. But some fun games in here, Stacker. They do have the uh, Surfers game, the Crash game, Mini Hoops, the Jurassic Escape VR game. We have three ski balls in here. We saw the two at Playmakers earlier. Lane Master, the Big Bass Wheel, Key Master. They do have the banked air hockey table. And of course, our favorite, Laughing Madness, Batman versus Joker air hockey table. Not only do you play with the regular size puck, but all of those little ones dump out at some point. Madness is the correct word. It gets nuts. They do have Fruit Ninja over there. They have Magic Arrow, Winner's Cube, couple of claw machines, even a plucky ducky. If you want to get your own duck and hide it here on the cruise ship, that's a popular pastime of sailors. They also have a prize hub, so your uh, CPASS card or your arcade card will keep track of your virtual tickets, and then you can redeem those here at the prize hub for various prizes, which is a, a pretty nice feature to have. Oh, and one thing to point out before we leave, another COVID protocol that has disappeared, arcade games were closed off, and every other one would be closed off to allow for distancing. Now all of the games are open and ready to play. Proceeding down the hallway, we will now find an exit to go outside, and you also take it to Johnny rockets as the sign says there but we'll get to that in just a little bit we're going to continue on forward here we'll find the workshop this is kind of like the arts and crafts area of adventure ocean let me see yeah no one's in there so i can show the area so you see they have all the tables set up for them to do different arts and crafts drawings or paintings or different things and they also have a cool lounge space over there in the back with the porthole windows looks like they have some beanbag chairs set up back there which is really nice and then this cool wall just continues all the way back here this is really neat. So kind of kids get their own area. It's all tucked up in the back here. Very nice. And at the end here, we will find the arena. As you can see, the sign says six to 12 years old. There are kids in there, so I won't be able to show that one, but it's basically just like a big play area. I see some beanbag chairs. I see a dodgeball, it looks like. There are some virtual games like we saw posted on the wall back there. I do see a foosball table and a big easel board. So it's just a big play area for ages six to 12, different activities they might have. Now I've come back down the hallway to these doors I pointed out earlier that said, I said it goes out to Johnny Rockets as the sign says, but you see this sign, features Social 033, which I believe is the team space on board. So I think you have to actually go outside to access that. So let's go ahead and do that now. And as we come outside on the deck here, the sign does say arcade back in there. So you can go through if you wanted to access the arcade. We will get to the teen spot in just a minute, but first things first, we do have the aforementioned Johnny Rockets. This is for an additional cost, not included with your cruise fare but you can get burgers and fries, chili, bacon, cheese, fries kind of things. They do have chicken sandwiches, salads, all kinds of stuff, milkshakes. This is a popular spot to come for those and desserts. So the way it works with Johnny Rockets is it is an additional cost. Like I mentioned, you pay a cover charge and then you basically can get a starter or a sandwich or a burger or whatever. And then one of the desserts included with that cover charge uh, does not include the shakes. The only drinks that come with it are water or like a, uh, fountain soda so the milkshakes would be additional so let's uh you can sit outside here which we did the other day actually they have these hard booths out here on the outside in the open air it is covered but if it rains you will get some rain from the side there i will point that out but you can also eat inside let's see if it's open if we can take a look okay it looks like they have the doors shut off right now but it's easy enough to see from the outside here it's one straight shot you have that typical diner style with the chrome and the leather seats kind of thing and they have the little jukeboxes on the tables though they don't actually work it's still fun decor but yeah you can sit inside sit at the counter sit in a booth so now we're going to proceed back all the way out here on deck 12 I'm currently on the starboard side of the ship we're just gonna head back here and check out a few different things so the first thing we'll find here you see the sign social 033 as I mentioned this is the teens area I tried to go in the door but it is locked so unfortunately I won't be able to show you that teen space area again it is kind of hard 
to film the kids and teens spots on Royal Caribbean now. But I can show you their outdoor section because there's no one out here, so it's perfectly fine to film. They do have this cool just like outdoor patio section with the different chairs and tables and plants, kind of with these fake hedges to give them their own private space. So that's pretty cool. And I'll give the official name, Social 033, the patio. Maybe it's Social 33, but I like that they have the zero there. Anyways, the patio, that's the outdoor section. And as we come along here on deck 12, we'll see that we have some stairs up there we'll get to that in just a second I wanted to point out that they do have sun loungers all the way around here on the back get that great view out the aft which is really nice uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and head up these stairs here even though this will be technically on deck 13 this is where you could most people will access this area although you can access it from the inside so I just want to show kind of where you're coming up here. It's gonna drop you off at the Flow Rider, which is the surf simulator on board. This is included with your cruise fare. They will have stand-up surfing as well as boogie board on your knees. And then you can head up to the rest of the deck. You see the perfect storm water slides and all that. We'll get to that in just a little bit when we do deck 13. But for now, let's head back. We gotta finish up deck 12. All right, back inside on deck 12 here. And you see again, the entrance to Adventure Ocean, but I pointed out the sign said over here for AO babies, also AO juniors. So those younger age groups, will actually access their areas here on this hallway on the starboard side. I'll just come down here and I do believe these rooms are in use so we will not be able to go in right now. Oh actually the sign says we are at the arena so everyone's in the arena that we showed earlier. So here's just a quick look. It's just a small play area. I mean that's typically what it is you know soft furniture and areas to draw and things like that so that's AO juniors three to five years old across from that AO babies six to 36 months there are children in there actually so just kind of show you from the outside here it's just a small play area but they can keep an eye on them maybe have some cribs set up or things like that so back at our map here just to kind of give the overhead of what we just did so we started in the middle went through we saw play place that kind of playground inside the arcade the workshop that had like the different arts and crafts area and then the arena was that big area at the end and then we just saw our AO babies and AO juniors over here on the side and then we also outside saw Johnny Rockets and then the entrance to social 033 or social 33 uh, as well as the patio for that and then the outdoor sun deck area with the chairs and then we went up the stairs where that flow rider is we'll get back to that area in just a bit when we go up to deck 13 but now we need to show the rest of deck 12 so again it's kind of just the sun deck and the jogging deck. It's the upper area of the pool deck that we saw from uh, up above earlier. We did the bird's eye view. Then we'll have the spa at the front. So let's head back outside, check out the rest of deck 12. We're heading forward. So as we come out here on the sun deck slash jogging track, you see the jogging track there painted on the ground. And again, we'll get in that bird's eye view from up above Splash Away Bay and the pool deck. But what you're gonna see is, this is the sun deck. So you're gonna find lots and lots of lounge chairs. But what you're also gonna find are these colorful casitas that were added as part of the Royal Amplification and the Caribbean style pool deck. Now these casitas used to be free when we first saw them on Navigator of the Seas. It was first come, first serve. Not the case anymore. So current pricing has them at $149, $149 for the day if you are in port, $199 for the day if it is a sea day. So you do have to pay additional to reserve and use those. And it is obviously a pretty penny. If you're interested in that, you do speak to the lime and coconut staff over there at the bar. They are the ones who manage and handle these. You can now also reserve these casitas on my Royal Cruise before your cruise on Royal Caribbean's website. I don't know if it's been integrated into the old cruise planner system, because once again, Royal Caribbean switching over where you purchase shore excursions, Wi-Fi, drink and dining packages before your cruise used to be called the cruise planner. Now it's going to be called My Royal Cruise. So I know for this sailing, we were using My Royal Cruise. You could actually purchase these casitas ahead of time. So just keep that in mind. If you want to purchase a casita, if you want to use one, they are an additional cost. So it's a mirror image once again on both sides here. You're just going to have the, uh, the sun chairs throughout. You're going to have these cool, colorful dome style day beds, which are a lot of fun. And then you'll get the view back down to the pool deck. Now here we'll have the upper deck of the Lime and Coconut. Like I mentioned, it is a multi-deck bar, the main area down on deck 11 at the pool deck, but you do have some additional seating, uh, couches, fun colorful stuff, high tops, and bar rail seating here at the bar. So the, this part of the bar is not currently open. It usually opens later in the day. Of course we're in port, so not as many people on the ship right now. They don't really need to have it open, but it, I think it has the same stuff as the, the deck below. So it's just the lime and coconut continued out. They do have the lights here 
strung up, very beautiful at night. And as I mentioned, there is a third deck up there. Let's go ahead and go up and take a look at that. So here we go, that top level of the Lime and Coconut, just a lot of sun lounges up here, some tables and chairs, and of course more of those beautiful lights light them up at night it looks quite gorgeous and you get the all-around views from up here look back down at the pool deck watch the movie on the big screen check out the sea around you or if you're in port the different ships and the uh, different structures and sites of those various ports so wraparound views up here nice place to come or just relax enjoy the breeze and take it all in let's head back to deck 12 and finish it up and as we come down from that upper deck area again you'll just find more sun loungers all throughout it is the sun deck of course and then they have some couches around the side back to the casitas area as well and then you can look down into the solarium before we head inside and finish up deck 12 i did want to point out from here on out deck 13 and 14 are kind of split well actually just 13 14 is only on one side of the ship so on deck 13 forward is the freedom dunes mini golf course you will access that via the stairs on the outside here on deck 12 you cannot access it from the inside only on the outside and only via these stairs i did want to point out though that if you come over here to the port side they do have an accessible lift that you can use to get you up those stairs. But these two stairwells are the only way to access the Freedom Dunes mini golf course. We'll get to that in just a little bit. We're gonna head inside now and finish up deck 12. So deck 12 forward now, you will find the entrance to the Vitality at Sea Spa. So the fitness center down below, they do have the spa up here above. So you'll just check in here at the desk if you have a treatment or if you need to purchase one. You can also purchase additional treatment items here as well. And then they have the different treatment areas on around. Around. So as you come into, they also have the salon here. If you need to get your hair treatments, looks like they also do nail treatments inside of the salon. And then over here on this side, they do have the entrance to the different treatment rooms. So if you have a treatment, they'll be scheduled in one of those rooms back there. So there we go, that is going to do it for deck number 12. Now I was talking about deck 13 and 14 back out there and 15 as well, actually I forgot. So this is what I was talking about. Technically this area here is deck 13, but then there's nothing here. It's completely open air, it only goes down to deck 12. So then deck 13 picks back up here on the back end of the ship and 14 and 15 are only here on the midship to aft section of the ship. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up to 13, we're gonna start here at the forward part, show you that, then we'll have to go back down, transverse across, and then go back up. Let's do it. Back outside on deck 12, because once again, the only way to access deck 13 forward are these stairs here on the outside. There's nowhere on the interior to go up. And then here on the port side is where you will find the accessible lift should you need it. Let's head up the stairs and take a look. And as we arrive to the top here on deck 13 forward, this is the highest point that you can access as a guest on the forward part of the ship. We will be able to go higher in the back, but here, forward this is as high as it gets so as you can see tons of tons of sun loungers lounge chairs throughout here they do have these cool arched freshwater showers as well and then some covered shaded seating underneath here next to the cool mural but the main point of emphasis the big feature ticket item here on deck 13 forward is freedom dunes this is the mini golf course that is included with your cruise fare it's a nine hole course you can pick up your clubs here balls are located in there I like to point that out because that is easy to miss. People do it all the time. That's where you're gonna grab those. Nice photo up here with the van. And then you're gonna have your nine hole mini golf course with all kinds of fun obstacles. Hit it up the ramp into the boat, play clamshell plinko over there, put it through the lighthouse. There's a waterfall swirl action up a ramp over there. Lots of fun stuff here at the Freedom Dunes. And you're at the forward part of the ship. You can see all around you. It's a really cool spot to take in the views as well. And we came up on the port side, but the starboard side is the exact same. Another cool freshwater shower thing here, and then just a bunch of sun loungers, and then the stairs that go down on this side. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I have to take those stairs back down. I have to walk across deck 12 to the back of the ship, to the midship area, and then we'll come back up to deck 13. So deck 13 midship interior is where we are at now, right next to the midship elevators and stairs. I did wanna point out something in regards to those elevators. If you were taking them up to deck 13 or deck 14, it will only be on the port side. As you can see, the starboard elevators stop at deck 12. So you will not be able to access deck 13 or 14 from there or 15, but 15 is not elevator access anyways. We'll get to that in just a second. So again, I was at deck 13 forward. I had to go down to 12, walk back here and then come back up the stairs 
to deck 13. So what we're here for is the sports court and water activities area. We saw a sneak preview of it earlier. Let's head outside, take a look. So right when we come out, they do have these helpful signs to point you in the right directions. Go to the right for the perfect storm water slides, the left for the rock climbing wall or the flow rider. And then they do have this map here. So you see you are here when we come out, the rock climbing wall will be the first thing we see followed by the basketball court. Then we have the perfect storm water slides on the port side of the ship, flow rider we saw in the very back. So let's go ahead and head out here to the right. This is the port side. And as we see, we'll turn around. First thing first is the rock climbing wall. So this is included with your cruise fare during the hours of operation. They actually have the sign up desk over there. You can see it says rock climbing wall right there. That's the sign up area. Here's some information about the rock climbing wall. So you can come and do that to your heart's content during the hours of operation. Next thing we'll find is the full size basketball court. You can see we have a hoop at either end here. Sometimes they'll set up little nets to play soccer, have different activities out here, three point contests, free throw contests, stuff like that. Or they'll just have it for free play basketball. Again, also included with your cruise fare. Now, we come out here over to the, on the, again, the port side, have a couple of ping pong tables. And then we'll find some sun lounge chairs located throughout the deck as well as some bench seating here if you want to watch basketball or watch someone doing the rock climbing. Main feature here on the back though are the perfect storm water slides, the typhoon and the cyclone, two body slides that are pretty much almost exactly the same. Uh, it looks like both of them do have the clear section, although neither one of the clear sections is out over the side of the ship. Both sides do go out over the side of the ship. It's just enclosed. And it looks like both of them do have the stripes that let the sunlight in. And it looks like, you know, flashing colored lights inside, which is really cool. I will say we have not done these slides on this ship. We've done them on other ships and we have seen people getting stuck here consistently. I do think they probably should increase the, the water flow of these slides. They're usually pretty slow to begin with as we've experienced on other ships. And it seems like it's really the case here on board Freedom of the Seas. So just something to keep in mind. Let's look at the uh, weight restrictions and height restrictions and stuff for the cyclone and the typhoon. And they usually do not allow filming on board the water slide. And then of course, right next to that, again, we do find our flow rider that we saw earlier stadium seating on either side and if you do need to sign up or sign a waiver get any information about that that will be the desk here next to the staircase that take you up to the perfect storm water slides now before we wrap up deck 13 and go to deck 14 i did want to point out you'll see that there is a staircase here on the starboard side as well as one over there on the port side those lead up to the outdoor patio areas of the suite lounge and the diamond club but we're gonna access those from the inside. So let's go ahead and head inside. We'll wrap up deck 13, we'll go to 14. And interesting to note, they don't have the typical directional map that I've been using posted here on deck 13. So the digital display board will have to suffice, but this is actually a good time to point these out. You will see these located at pretty much every elevator bay and stairwell area on all of the decks. They are digital touch boards that you can use. They have the deck map for the current deck you're on, the day's temperature and time and information, upcoming events. You can also use it to find things. So you, like they have the wayfinder. So you can click on that or do the different deck maps to show different stuff. Like see, now I've changed it to deck 14. So things like that. It's really cool. It has all the, again, the information in here. You can even change the languages, do different stuff like that. If you need help finding something, you can use these again, all the elevators, pretty much all of the elevators and stairwells. So if we check out our digital map here, we saw the flow rider, the perfect storm, basketball court, rock climbing wall, and then up again, forward deck 13 is just the freedom dunes and that sun deck area. So that means we are done with deck 13. Let's go up to 14. So deck 14, we take a look. I think I mentioned this earlier. There's nothing forward or even midship. Everything here on deck 14 is located in the aft section right above the midship elevators, actually off of the midship elevators. Again, only on the port side though. You will not have those on the starboard side. So just a few things to show here. We do have the Viking Crown Lounge, the Diamond Club, and the Suite Lounge. So that says Viking Crown Lounge. I actually, actually haven't been calling it that as much lately. You see the sign here says Olive or Twist, which is the name of the bar. So this is a big multi-use space, sometimes karaoke. A lot of times I'll turn this into a nightclub at night. Do have the big bar located there off to the side. 
You're gonna have the floor to ceiling windows all the way around, tables, chairs, comfortable seating, take in these beautiful views during the day. It's a nice quiet place to relax, lounge out. And then at night, again, they will have the different entertainment and activities you see. They got the lights and the disco ball and the dance floor located here in the middle. Now, a couple things to check out off to the sides. Let's start over here with the Diamond Club. So the Diamond Club is a lounge space that is reserved for members of the Crown and Anchor Society, that's Royal Caribbean's loyalty program, who have reached diamond status. So diamond, diamond plus, or pinnacle, you will have access to this lounge. So you see they have the hours posted there when they're doing the continental breakfast, their snacks, their evening cocktails, all of that. So you're just gonna take your CPAS card, put it in there to gain entry. So right when we come into the Diamond Lounge, we'll see you have the digital board there with some different information. So you also have uh, different QR codes you can scan for the different restaurants, menus, uh, cocktail menu, as well as some information about the uh, next cruise desk or lead you to the cruise compass on the mobile app. They'll have the uh, little concierge desk here, can assist you with making reservations or any service issues you may have. And then they just have this nice space with the different couches and the tables and chairs. They'll also have the uh, specialty coffee machine Machine there chilled water and then again throughout the day maybe some hors d'oeuvres or snacks uh, continental breakfast in the morning they also have sodas and beers and wines available there for that evening cocktail service hour and then you can come outside this is what I was mentioning earlier when we were out on deck 13 I showed those stairs this comes out here to this outdoor patio so it's just some tables and chairs out here nothing too special but you do get a nice view and then there's the stairs that I pointed out to take you back down to the sports deck. Some nice tables out here if you wanna come sit out, watch people play basketball, just get a nice view from behind the ship. You can do that. Before we leave the Diamond Lounge, I wanted to point out that they do have some computers over here that you can use as well, should you need them. So we have Olive or Twist in the middle here. We have the Diamond Lounge over on the starboard side. Now we're gonna turn and head here onto the port side, and that is where we will find the suite lounge. So this is the lounge for guests who are staying in suites on board. So put in your room key if you have access to that, and you'll be able to go in. Let's take a look at it. So we come into the suite lounge here, and you actually have a door that goes through back into the Viking Crown or the Oliver Twist area. But you're just gonna find very similar to the Diamond Lounge, just a lot larger, lots of seating in here chairs, tables, couches. You're gonna have those floor to ceiling windows to get the view. And then right when you come in, they have the concierge desk there to assist you with anything that you need. And similar to the Diamond Lounge, have this specialty coffee machine, different teas, hot chocolate, chilled water, and then they'll have various foods at different times of the day for service right there. And you can also head outside onto the patio. Again, very similar to the Diamond Lounge. Maybe some uh, nicer seating out here though. A little bit more plush, some couches, tables, chairs, and then same thing, comes out here, have the stairs back down to the sports court, and then the tables and chairs over on this side as well. All right, so we have seen the different, three different lounge slash club areas here on deck 14, and that is all there is to it for deck 14. Now, deck 15 is kind of its own thing, and we're actually just gonna turn right around because this is where you would access deck 15. Now here's a bit of a bummer. On other ships that have received Royal Amplification, they have added an escape room here. This used to be the Skylight Chapel, and now you see it says Skylight Meeting Room. They did not add an escape room to this ship, to Freedom of the Sea. So this is just the Skylight Meeting Room, and as you go up, it's always just kind of locked off. I guess you can use this for a private function space should you need to, but that's really all it is right now. Kind of unfortunate, it would be nice if there was an escape room. Last thing to point out here that's gonna wrap up our tour, we do have stairs here to go up to the skylight meeting room, but this one does have the chairlift, as you can see, built into the rails that go up the stairs here to deck 15, that skylight meeting room, which is closed off. No access for right now. But that is gonna do it. That's the last thing to see on our tour. Let's wrap it up. All right, friends, that is going to do it for our tour of Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. We hope you enjoyed it, found it informational and useful as you plan your voyage on board this wonderful ship. If you're interested in sailing on board Freedom of the Seas or another fine Royal Caribbean vessel, we can help make that happen. As travel agents, it would be our pleasure. Our services are completely free to you and we'd love to help out. So feel free to reach out via the travel agent information you can find in the description of this video. 
If you've recently booked a cruise with Royal Caribbean in the past 30 days and you're not paid in full, you can transfer your booking to our agency. We'll be able to help you the rest of the way. That is also completely free of charge. If you're interested in more information about Freedom of the Seas, we encourage you to check out our Freedom of the Seas playlist where you can find daily vlogs as well as our room tour of the Ben & Jerry's Suite. It's so awesome. You don't want to miss it. So check that out on our channel. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us for today's video. We're signing off. We'll see you next time. Happy travels!